This is a HeadGum Podcast. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode of our podcast. Love it. Actually, of my podcast. Actually, of my podcast. <laughs> All right, fine, of our podcast. No. I was just kidding, but the way you said it sounded Mine. like... Mine! Oh, shit. I won't put up a can of worms. You know, since it's sort of the new year, uh, people are making a lot of moves, and there's no better way to make your next move, to make your next website... With Squarespace. No matter what your hustle, you know you got to have a website. That's right. Uh, whether it's a, uh, a blog, an online portfolio, even a store, they have beautiful award-winning designer templates all in one platform. So you can create a beautiful website, and there's no need to install, patch, or upgrade ever. they got 24-7 customer service, and Squarespace offers a unique domain experience that's fully transparent and simple to set up. I know what you're thinking. There's not any good domain names available, though. Uncorrect you are. Uncorrect indeed. Every time we rant and rave about Squarespace, we provide for you, the listener, an, uh, a domain name that is available at the time of recording. For example, if you wanted to, you could snag probably, most likely, still available is tightshell.com. That's a pretty tight shell. That's a tight shell. Where'd you get that? Oh, I actually got it from tightshell.com. That's awesome. So if you're in the business of making shells. Yeah, that are tight. That are tight shells. Yeah. Tightshell.com. What about you? It's Amir. Huh? Dot com. What? That's available? It's Amir. What the fuck? That's better than my name. www.itsamir.com. Dot com. That's great. That's great for any Amirs in your life. So uh, I was gonna do it's Amir's birthday. Uh huh. But you didn't even have to. It as soon as I typed that. in it's Amir, I was like, this one's available. <laughs> Holy crap! Why don't you get it's Jake? Because you know how your dumb, your your full name is not available, right? That's true. Is it's Jake? It's Jake dot com. Yeah, it's taken. Of course, it's taken. Yeah, should have acted fast. Uh, but if you're interested in these domains or anything else, uh, go to squarespace.com. Sla- uh, sorry, and enter offer code if I were you. Go to squarespace.com and enter offer code if I were you to get 10% off your first purchase. Hey, these prices are already low and they're getting lower uh, with our coupon code. So, again, squarespace.com offer code if I were you. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring us again. I kill myself at a Starbucks I blow my brains out right there If these two little slimy dudes told me that's how I can show that I care I've got a bit of a query This girl, she's a dime, she's a ten There's just one little problem think that she wants me dead I keep finding all these papers Labeled plan of attack This girl's been nothing but coy to me Is she gonna stab me in the back? Do you have any suggestions? Should I hit it and quit? I'm probably gonna go for it If I were you If I were you I'd tell you what I would do If only I were If only I were you Damn Damn Thank you, Dashboard Confessional. That was lovely. I'm stunned. <laughs> You're crying. Yeah, I am. But I was crying before the song started. <laughs> Unrelated. I'm going through some shit right now. <laughs> that was Jeremy Lindenfeld, who's 18. Wow. Wow. 18. Prodigy. And would love a shout out to his band, C Den, S E A D E N. They're on YouTube, they're on SoundCloud. D E N? Like sea uh, den, like it's in the it, like a den, a, of, den, a den in the sea, a yeah. den in the sea, not yeah. like a sedan. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, that's different. Completely like unrelated. Ursula's. That's a den in the yeah. sea. Yeah. Yeah. Ursula's <laughs> living. When my yeah. uncle Dan goes swimming, that's a sea dan. Yeah. <laughs> he only goes swimming in the. He sea. drives a coupe, <laughs> <laughs> a two door sport. Uh, Billy and Adam in the house. What's Yo. going on, guys? Thanks for having us. They're back and better than ever. When was the last time you guys were on the show? 
When was that, Bill? Maybe like uh, we just started the podcast. We just started No Joke, so maybe like a uh, little less than a year ago. Less than wow. a year. The episode maybe. was called Olive Oil. I don't oh. remember. Yeah, the context, we talked about but... masturbating with olive oil. It was someone who that asked... was Billy. This is your third time on our show, Adam. Second, because the first time you were on the show, we went to McDonald's and we got a fillet of fish. That's oh, right. Yeah. And That's my stomach right. just started to feel normal today. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great day. I, I remember having a great day with you guys. It's Did funny fun because podcast. we now you, we're recording now. You just brought. Dope Donuts. So right. it's like some sort Always of a food theme based. in our lives yes. where we eat foods that are bad for us. <laughs> I saw, yes. There was that half piece of cheese on a donut down <laughs> Yeah, that like was the fish donut. donut. I, I had that them. was just the fish donut. The fish donut. <laughs> they, they just squished white fish. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, no, no. Was, it's like a Boston the... cream donut except with <laughs> oh, fucking God. I got you stuff. the Boston cream and I got Amir the white fish. <laughs> the white fish donut. It's That's, Amir's birthday. It they were seems, like, what? It seems anti-Semitic that you got me that. A little bit. Of course. Why did you give me the white fish? White fish donut. If we say white fish donut one more time, it's going to be appetizing. It's disgusting. But if Keep talking about it. I want it. That's, white fish. That's donut. Adam's fantasy basketball team. <laughs> white fish white donut. Fish donut. Yeah. <laughs> I was a big gefilte fish addict when I was oh, a kid. Oh, really? Though. Huge gefilte fish addict. Dude, I'm addict. Like, yeah. Like you needed it. I needed <laughs> yes, it. Yes, Jake. <laughs> Yes, it. Jake. I needed it. <laughs> he like legitimately needed. it. Yes, my parents. Were, everyone in my life was repulsed and disgusted by my uh, pension for gefilte fish, and then fish. even more so by their by your withdrawal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, or withdrawal <laughs> symptoms. Where they yeah they <laughs> detoxed you for a month. You Mom, were throwing up piles. Take me to the Hannafords. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was really bad. And at my bar mitzvah, I actually had the caterers, the two lovely Israeli caterers, make me, the bar mitzvah boy, my own individual plate of just <laughs> gefilte fish. You're but I ate alone in silence. This is, yeah, this is the fish for the public, and this is Sir Adam's <laughs> fish. This is here. the new nobody, man's fish. Nobody gets my fish, papa. <laughs> You're like Veruca kosher salt. Just like a very, uh, mere. A very uh, a well-to-do yes. Jewish gentleman boy. Exactly. Adam who taught needed me one, his fish. Adam taught me one thing about gefilte <clears throat> fish, which is that it's the only fish in the supermarket that doesn't need to be refrigerated. Red flag. Oh, <laughs> Big yeah, red flag. Dog. Oh, it's in the cereal aisle? <laughs> <laughs> but that's fish. <laughs> But that's fish, though. <laughs> it's next to the peanut oh, butter. From the <laughs> sea to aisle seven. <laughs> Seriously. Exactly. <laughs> you can so, just eat it right out of the bag that they bag it in at the you bring it to store. outer space. <laughs> oh, Nothing affects funny. gefilte. So gross. Fruit Loops, uh, gefilte <laughs> fish. And then over there in the refrigerated <laughs> section is the real fish. <laughs> gefilte fish does have a cereal mascot, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it does, doesn't it? It's Gilly the fish. <laughs> Gilly the nervous fish. <laughs> Gilly yeah. the oh, jeez. He swims in jeans <laughs> the only fish that wears jeans in the lake uh, so, uh, such a uh, fish. solid app solid app so, so far great. Yeah. we are out of time but thank you guys so much for coming once again check out the no joke podcast <laughs> super fun get your uh, white fish donuts wherever you can get them that's funny uh, this is our podcast this is If I Were You the only advice podcast on the internet hosted by Jake and I sometimes we're by ourselves sometimes we're our friends now we're with friends and fellow headgum podcasters but up, but up. Billy and Adam hey what's going on uh, you guys have your own show on our network. We do. It's called No Joke. That's right. New episodes come out every Friday, which is the day in between Thursday and Saturday. Oh, that's a good. It's a good uh, sandwich to Jake and I's show. It's like we got the Monday show, yeah, right. Billy and Adam on Friday. That's, that's right. right. Oh, nice. We're the bread. I would say, and the rest of the podcast would be, I would say, the white fish. The meat. In this <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the white fish <laughs> yeah. in the donut. In the donut. <laughs> uh, so, unlike your podcast here, we're basically trying to advise people out of their sticky situations. Great. People will email us. They're confused. They're scared. They want to know what 31 to 35-year-old white people think about their situation. Who doesn't? <laughs> Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Who does not? Who does not want Who's that? Who's 35 in this room? Me. You're 35? Yeah. Good man. Thank you. Look at him. <laughs> exactly. Look at him. Look at him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, truly. <laughs> a second, I can't wait to be 35. Yeah. A second. Yeah, yeah, dude. 35 looks good on you, Bill. <laughs> you could be president. That's the year. Okay. You should be president. That is the year. You know what? Maybe I will be yeah. president. Dun, 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 dun. Are we okay with that, by the way? 35 is the floor, right? You have to be at least 35? Yeah. yeah. Wow. The new but one... what if there's like a 27-year-old genius who is like clearly the best president? I'm Practice. fine with the floor. I actually think there should be a ceiling. Yes. I don't think you should be able – I said this to you guys before. I don't think you should be able to vote after 65. 65. I think 65, you can't be president yep. anymore either. I You're think, on the way out, I brother. Think you need to take a Make way for the test. future. Same thing. When you turn like 50, 60, 70, every 10 years you have to pass a driving test yep. again. Yep. You should <laughs> not be grandfathered into and then when you're, assuming you're safe. When you're yes. 80 taking your driving test, they actually just drive the car off a cliff. Off a cliff. <laughs> And that's the end of your life. Hey, you're <laughs> good, buddy. <laughs> he passed. <laughs> Thump. Um, the new Rams 
uh, head coach, Los Angeles Rams head 30. coach. 30. That's silly, man. 30. That's, That's crazy. He'd be the youngest one in this room. How would you do that? Yeah. How could you then Like, there's definitely men. people on the team that are older than For him, sure. Right? Definitely. Oh, yeah. 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 I would say most of the team is over 30. Yeah. yeah. Really? I don't know with football. I guess it's it's a young... He's That's a millennial. Crazy. He rides his bike I guess the, the front line is all over 30, and then the... Uh, yes, exactly. Everybody. Oh the, the fast people are in yeah. the teens. <laughs> yeah. As they, as they should be. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to find the best question to start mm-hmm. with. Uh, here's a good one. Cool. This will get us set us on our way. Great. Uh, Adam, why don't yes. we get, get a fake guy's name? Uh, how about uh, Tad, Tad William Smith? That's pretty good. good. Nice. So his is last Tad? name is Will Smith? Uh, William Smith. Uh, is there a hyphen? <laughs> There's a hyphen there. Oh, William Smith. William and Smith. His, oh, ma- so his maiden name is William. That's right. <laughs> and he married he, he, took, he took his wife's name, Smith. Oh, uh, William Smith. Yes. Got it. Okay. Tad William Smith. <laughs> Very right. progressive. <laughs> Super progressive. <laughs> So here's the deal. I'm currently doing a year-long service program in a new city, and the program set me up with two worst roommates I've ever had in my life. Oh, shoot. It's not that they have any annoying habits or that they don't clean or anything. It's not even that they're not good people. <laughs> they're both also involved in a year of service and genuinely seem like they want to make the world a better place. Assholes. The problem is that I just hate being around them. <laughs> for whatever reason, our personalities don't mesh. They constantly annoy the shit out of me for just being who they are. Awesome. So I guess I just need some advice on how to survive seven more months of this shit. <laughs> Have you ever had shit roommates? Side note, I don't think this plays a big part, but just for context, I'm a man and they're both women. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> Tough little addendum there. <laughs> Every neighborhood has crazy neighbors, and if yours doesn't, you're the crazy neighbor. Exactly. Yeah. And my dude, you're the weird one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't like you. <laughs> you're the weird one. Turn the mirror around, my man. Perhaps. Well, have you guys ever had shit roommates is the, the first question. I personally have been fortunate enough to always be able to essentially choose my roommates. Same. Even Same, in right? college? Oh uh, no! In college, I did have a shitty roommate. I should take that back. My first freshman year, col- <laughs> my freshman year roommate was a bit of an asshole. Yeah, he was a weird guy deal? from Philadelphia. He was just persnickety and didn't like me having friends over, even though college is a time for friends. <laughs> this is what you told him. It's a kind of a but big part of it. A time for friends. <laughs> yeah, this is time for friends. No. <laughs> uh, so he was sort of a prick. He was a prick. Um, but other than that, my roommate, I've been I've kind of had a thousand with roommates for the God. most part. This dude hasn't said one thing about his roommates that like I can give any advice on how to solve it. They <laughs> right. sound like the most. They're Personalities Ideal. don't clash Mesh. or don't click. Yeah. yeah, it just sounds like Tad is a misanthrope, and I appreciate it. I just you just don't like people, Tad. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you might not like other human beings. Yeah, it's is simple. that what that means? Yeah, you just try a little harder. Just try, just a try a little, just try to relate to them on something. There you go. He might l- love them. Yeah. Have the you ever, problem is he might love them, and he has to. Uh, he's pretending like he's not. Okay. Has anybody ever done a one eighty like that in your life, where you hated him, and then you're like, wait a minute, I should just view him in a different lens, and now I think I like this person. I've never taken someone out of the hate pile into the love. Into the it love seems pile. like it only goes the other way. One way. That's a one like, way. Like I like this person, and now I no longer like him. And right. That's on to the next. And now I no longer like that person. Oh, no, I go. I go. I, you go I, back. Yeah. People go from one pile to the other daily. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so fickle, Jake. Yeah. My God, I hated you at the top. Of yeah. The yeah that's just exactly. like full of passion, and sometimes, you, sometimes <laughs> the sometimes you shine the light on the world with someone you love, and then sometimes you spin the spotlight and you. <laughs> Want to burn them to death? Whoopsie! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you? Can you name someone that you used to hate that you're now really close with? Or? Marty. Oh, interesting. <laughs> uh, uh, what about you guys? Marty as well. Yeah. Marty. Or only Marty. <laughs> first mainly. impression. First time I met Marty, I was like, "This dude's just gonna be up my ass. This yeah. is trouble." Why did Jake and Amir bring him on to head gum? They were doing fine with. He's that. a dangerous boy. Yeah, yeah that's not true. Marty. I, I my, my girlfriend Maggie often gets upset at me because I do try to employ that tactic of just like pretend you like them. Just pretend. Right. And then ultimately, like a hat, your habit will form if you lie to yourself enough. Just say, just pretend mm-hmm. that you like them. Uh-huh. Just make believe <laughs> until it's real. Make it and this you is make it. This is you telling her to do that or is this I do that myself function? and she's like I think that you're a false man I think that means you're a false man <laughs> 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 Uh, well, if that's genuinely the way you feel. There's it's just like if I don't like that. something, like why exist in that sort of like well, you sound perturbed, Tad. You sound annoyed. Like right. here's a way out of it. Just trick, just <laughs> dumb yourself down enough that you can trick yourself to like it a little. <laughs> that really you is do. true. Though. If you, if you like have one conversation with them where you like, God, just like laugh and smile and pretend you care Fake about it. what they what they like. <laughs> build on that. Fake just, it. Then you, just then, like, that. then you really do. You, know, you, you walk away, even if you like don't remember like the substance of the conversation. You walk away and you're like, 
I was smiling. <laughs> right. Well, I think I was happy then. Exactly. My, my body's in joy mode. Yeah. Because like two years later, you're definitely not going to remember any substance of the conversation you had with anyone. All you're going to remember is the vague sensation of joy that <laughs> yeah. you had, whether it was true or fabricated. Well or a vague sensation of hate. That's all. And you didn't like that person. That's right. And I, I don't know it's why. A, it's simple. It's as simple as f- smile when you're talking to them. Seriously. Ju- <laughs> you will delude yourself into thinking you are having fun. Oh, but- so it's like it's a reverse brain thing. It's like yes. when I smi- I ha- when I'm happy, I smile. So if yeah. I'm smile, will that then force happy? This is like a real th- – it's a proven that- fact. Yes. Yeah. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, yeah. If you like fake – if you just smile – you trick yourself yes. into being happy. Hume, we're just dumb mammals. We can trick ourselves. We just have silly little brains. We can do it. We can fool ourselves. <laughs> I'm smiling right now, and I'm kind of happy. Yeah. <laughs> and I hate myself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, that's a good technique. I would say just fake the shit out of it until it becomes real or they move out. Yeah. 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 My girlfriend Marina does voiceover work, mm-hmm. and uh, usually if the copy asks for optimism or like a, like a hopeful voice, yeah. uh, the trick is to smile while you're reading yes. – all of the copy because it just becomes – your voice literally changes. Everything in your body changes. Oh, but if you walk in on somebody doing that voiceover with a crazy clown yeah. smile and yes. talking about like Downey's <laughs> air fresheners, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're insane. <laughs> so, uh, yes. But smile. Yes. yes. <laughs> so smile is the, is the, is the advice here. Yes. Just, just walk smile. In, How about walk into that. smile? Oh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, that's not bad. Seven months of smiles. Just pretend. Just pretend. Sounds that's... like seven months of smiles will drive a man crazy, too. Yeah. You don't want to smile seven too much. Seven months of <laughs> smiles. Starring seem... Liam Neeson. Because it, it could be that happiness is finite. The serotonin in your brain will eventually run out. And you only have so much. And you wasted it being fake nice? Yeah. But oh, GNC sells <laughs> serotonin. So you can literally go. Are you selling us MDMA right now? Exactly. People who take ecstasy a lot, they flood their brains with serotonin, and then the next day they are very depressed because they they used up all of their serotonin. But the smart uh, ecstasy users will go to GNC and literally buy the things that pump serotonin back. Yeah, the HTTP five. Is that what it is? You think it's that's a domain name. It's, like, it's something like that. HP5, HTTP5. That's like the serotonin thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. I mean, it works pretty slow. You really want to kill yourself <laughs> the morning. You take yeah. Well, you should really take ecstasy with this uh, that's serotonin. That's the other advice to take. Just take ecstasy. Oh, yeah. Just take, always take ecstasy. Beyond ecstasy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do a that way you'll, you won't be able to not smile. <laughs> exactly. You're going to love it anyway. Exactly. Uh, all right. Here's a, oh, ooh, a lady from Australia. Mm-hmm. Okay. Billy, I'll do you have a name lady. for an Australian lady? Um, uh, Patricia. Mm-hmm. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Patricia Williams Smith. <laughs> oh. Any relation? No relation. No relation. Sorry, no no relation. relation. Amazing. No re- Weird. We just used the same phone book and went not down. Even vaguely, not even vaguely related. Nope. Uh, straight to the point. I'm, I'll be 23 this year, and I'm still a virgin. Part of me wants to not care and follow the feminist belief that virginity is just a concept made up by men to make them feel that their dick is important enough to change a girl's life. Okay. The other part of me just wants some dick. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But I've realized that due to my anxiety disorder, intimacy will always freak me out to the Mm -hmm. point where I haven't even kissed someone in over two years. Wow. Do you ever find intimacy nerve-wracking? If so, any tips? If not, is there any shame in being well on my way to a real life forty year old version? Toda, all the love, Patricia Williams Smith. Hmm. <sighs> okay. Intimacy. Does it ever make me nervous? Only, of course. I mean, I think you'd have to be a robot <laughs> if intimacy didn't make you nervous. In some way. In some <clears throat> small way. Well, I imagine I mean, if you're sure. single, intimacy starts to become a little more a la carte, which then I would I would probably feel that way. Yeah. But once you start I'd Falling into a relationship, intimacy almost starts becoming more of like a fun, true kind of like game that you can play with someone where you know it's a very safe place. Yes. Right. And it's it's, it's about less trust. embarrassing. Yeah. Yes. I feel like once you can get to that point. Yes. So the sex positive perspective, sorry, Amir. No, I mean to cut you off. The sex no, no, no. positive uh, feminist in me says, A, you know, live your whole life a virgin. No one cares. There's no stigma against that. I don't, no one cares if you have sex or not. It's all in your own head. <laughs> It, n- truly no one cares that's, that's and a good B, point well said if, Adam if you want sex have all the sex if you want dick as you so poetically put it right go get that dick yeah. go get it. <laughs> I, it, it this is the first time I ever heard that men made up the concept of virginity to because their dick can change lives feel, yes like dick, their dick is so important it can change a woman's life of all the gender men, constru- both, I don't understand. Yes. It's like saying like, oh, when did you lose your virginity? Because I can, I can make you do that with my dick. <laughs> I can give you that fucking bar mitzvah. 
<laughs> right. I guess that sort of makes sense. Like you could only lose your virginity if, if somebody you're fucked fucks by a you. dick. Right. Right. And but I got the secret key. It's my dick, and I can take that. Virginity. Well, guys can be virgins too, and they can't be unvirgins unless a girl with the secret key, being a vagina, fucks right. them well, or about... a boy, another boy's butt. Yeah. Or... Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, is that that's the, you still need the, into the you still need the receiver? Yeah. Now we're getting into like what is what is sex? Is it right. penis and vagina, or is it butt into or is it butt and vagina? Butt no vagina. one talks about the rare no butt. Forehead. The butt goes into the vagina. <laughs> <laughs> it's the A to V, the A to A. <laughs> Um, what did you guys do last night? I stuck my butt in her vagina. Do you imagine the cheeks or the little the little pink eye? Oh, everything, the whole cheek. <laughs> Squeeze it. Oh beep, my God. beep, beep, I'm Falling into a toilet bowl. That is such a, a wide, wide vagina to allow the entire buttocks to enter. It's why it's Both so rare. Cheeks. It's why it's, it's so rare. So rare. Um, I grew up in Long Island where goons, goons central. And it's the type of place where you would think that dudes would be like, my dick can change lives. Yeah. yeah. I grew up with the dudes who would be cast to, to say that line. No. No one in my friend group would ever be caught dead saying that. And no one in my friend group believed that their dick could change yes. lives. I mean, like, that's a – like, to Jake's point, I've never heard that sentiment outside of, like, maybe, like, a big dumb movie jock. Right. I think yeah. my dick could mildly improve a life for a short amount of time sure. if somebody cons- it cons- it consented to it. Yes. And it was a nice <laughs> time for everyone. everyone. And then their then, life would probably yeah. recede back to normal. Yeah, of course. Right. Exactly. Mildly, mild improvement, and and a vagina or a butt could do that. Like maybe dick. if you know that story of <laughs> when like a, a car flips over and lands on a baby, and someone comes in and like yes. lifts the car. Up. The like if someone's dick lifted that car up, off that's that a life changing. That dick. dick literally changed a person's. By the life. way, you that's only true. ever hear about the ones that are able to lift the car. There's plenty of babies that are yeah. just crushed <laughs> under the car. Yeah, squish baby syndrome. <laughs> Didn't it's... have enough adrenaline, did you, mommy? <laughs> did you, <laughs> mommy? <laughs> I got the car an inch off the ground, which is more than I could do normally. Oh, Imagine feeling like a failure that you didn't lift a car off of your child. I but, could Matt, absolutely you like see myself <laughs> in this scenario. For some reason, it's on a bridge in my mind. <laughs> yeah, it has to be. It's always on a bridge, and the car flips, and it's on the baby, but the baby's still alive. And I would literally think to myself, okay, Billy, this is literally what you've been training for your whole life. You're the guy that saves this baby. What if you Getting there the car and off not the moving baby, the car. Though? What if you flip the car off the baby, and it landed on a bunch of other babies? Four babies. Was- four babies. <laughs> Yet. And a dog. <laughs> that was my one rep max. I really can't. But you have to reflip it. Yeah, reflip it yeah. or is roll it, the, it off the bridge onto is, an orphanage. Is it the opposite where you're strong enough to lift a car, but the adrenaline actually saps you of energy? You become weaker with adrenaline. Oh, that would it. be a really disappointing. You got to be calm, cool, out. and collected. You yeah. know, yeah. one time I did uh, rip open a car door after a car accident. How in, really? in Los Angeles? It was actually by Catalyst. Um, really? Yeah, where we all worked. Yes, on Highland and Santa Monica. Ish. Santa Monica ish. Yeah. You remember how there was always oh, yeah. though that there was like where those roads met, there was just a lot of left hand turns. Accident city. Where it was just people getting smashed Constantly. into one another. Yeah, and yeah, I walked yeah. out of Catalyst once and a person had literally just been smashed Mm-mm. and their door was like in and out, and you could tell they were in a state of panic. And I just like I was five steps away and I just grabbed it and just yanked the door open and they climbed out. And That's it was cool. amazing. Jeez, it was a yeah, total exploded. hero moment. You it were like great. Jaws of Life. Yes. A little bit. I mean, the door was already open, but I did give it that extra couple of inches that got him out. <laughs> yes. So... That's I exciting. Guess. That story really goes nowhere, but I'd like to think I could lift the car off the bed. <laughs> I think you probably could. If your friend Steve lifted a smart car and just moved it with oh, his hands. So, so just I for those bare friends, hands. My friends are goons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was yeah. a Fiat. Is my that friend... the guy that tore an <laughs> apple in half? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he just moved a car books. with his hands. <laughs> that, was his, that, was his, that was his bar prank. We'd get drunk at bars, and then he, we'd go out into the parking lot and find the smallest car, and then he would just pick it up and drag it into another parking Amazing. spot. Amazing. What are you talking about, dragging <laughs> that... it? Like, with, by what? By the two wheels that aren't in brake or in park. There was a Fiat. The, the famous one is the Fiat. He would pick it up from the back. So lift up the bumper from the back. Yeah, because yes. the engine's in the front, so yes. it's a little heavier. Okay. And it. then he would just grab it, and then we would push the front, and he would grab it, and we would like move it to like the other side of the parking lot. <laughs> just moving cars wow. with your hands. This is Long Island. Super I mean, like strength exists. The other point man for Long Island is Gabrus, and he's 500 pounds, and he like eats everything <laughs> and moves fiat. everything. Yeah. He is a Fiat. <laughs> he's a Fiat 500. Uh, have yeah, you myself. seen Gabrus' uh, tattoo? I have Long Strong. Island. Would you get? Would you ever get that? I would not. <laughs> yeah, it's a map of the island. That's, that's right. Cool. That's cool. It is definitely cool. I Dope. would not. Yeah. Just because you're anti-tattoo. 
I'm not anti-tattoo. I just I I'm love anti Long Island. <laughs> yeah, I love Long Island, but it's also the type of place that you're there for two days and you're like, you gotta go. You gotta uh, get out of here fast. So you don't want to constantly see it on your buy. Yeah, you got your buy. Yeah, <laughs> you want to say bye to the buy. Maybe I might try. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, her question about the dick. Oh uh, yeah. 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 Any tips about find if you find intimacy nerve wracking? It seems to me that it's a trust thing. The more comfortable you get with someone, yeah. you shouldn't rush it. Right. Go on as many dates as possible yeah. until you feel completely comfortable allowing this person to be intimate with you yes. yeah. maybe that'll be, lead to less anxiety yeah, nice especially, and don't be afraid to tell that person that you're anxious exactly. about intimacy yes. because yes. then they will hopefully if they're a good person be a lot more sensitive yes. to your anxiety yes honesty is and I imagine she might sorry no I imagine she might attract someone who might have similar feelings as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I, she doesn't seem like a one night stand type of person. I would say that you should try and find a friend who you might be able to turn that into more. Mm-hmm. That'd totally. be nice. Mm-hmm. Good. Best of luck, Patricia. Best of luck, Patricia. Uh, let's, take a, let's, take a, let's take a, <laughs> let's take a, let's take a, let's take a, let's take a break. Let's take a quick little break and then we'll be back with more questions and answers with Billy and Adam. Great. Thank you as well to Blue Apron for sponsoring this episode. You know, I don't care how much you try, you need to eat. I have tried to starve myself for weeks on end. Uh, I always end up needing food. Uh, unfortunately, not all ingredients are created equal. So when it comes to fresh, high-quality ingredients, that's what makes the real difference. Blue Apron basically will send you these ingredients in the mail and tell you how to cook them into really nice, proper meals. We're talking affordable. It's less than $10 per meal, and they'll deliver it to you free of charge. Whoa. Uh, There's great variety, new recipes every week. Uh, You can even choose. It's flexible. So you get to choose which ones uh, you want to make based on your dietary preferences. And it's easy. We've gotten Blue Apron. We've made Blue Apron. I made recently a stromboli. And? It was impeccable. Could you believe you made it based on the stuff that they gave you? I I'm mean, a chef. You were a chef And I'm going to open up my own stromboli place. It's called It's Jake <laughs> Stromboli. Uh, and... Blue Apron has a guarantee, freshest guarantee, that every ingredient in your delivery arrives ready to cook. So how does it work? You go to blueapron.com slash if I were you, check out the menu, and get your first three meals for free. Yeah, I really could open my own stromboli place as long as somebody provided me with dough. Yeah. <laughs> you mean money or actual dough? Both. <laughs> uh, so blueapron.com slash if I were you. You get three meals for free with free shipping. Uh, and check it out. Try it out. Become a better chef. They'll teach you how to do it, and then you can use that skill forever and ever and ever dot com. BlueApron dot com slash if I were you. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. We be back. We be back. We be back. Back. That lady's from Australia, which reminds me to say that Jake and I are doing live shows in Australia. Oh my god! Uh, in, to Australia. in Melbourne on March sixteenth, and Sydney on March eighteenth. Tickets are still available. Have you guys ever been to Australia? I have not. Never. Highly recommend. Oh, that'd yeah. be fun. Yeah. You guys were just in New Zealand. Just in New Zealand. Cool. And then New we were Zealand in Australia a couple years ago. Yeah. Have you guys talked about that goddamn swing you went on? Oh, maybe so. That was a the swing. They went on the world. The feeling of the swing. They went on the world. We talked about if we remembered how it felt. I asked you that once. Yeah. I think it was off a podcast. I'm like, does that? I, I remember seeing the video of the swing, but do you remember like actually hovering ex- over the the gorge and letting go and like feeling the drop of the the swing? <laughs> yeah, I can picture it. Yeah, <laughs> I remember being so happy that it was over. Yes. <laughs> this idea, relief. the swing was like looming over us the entire trip yeah. and like every happy moment we had it's like but there's a swing <laughs> yes just right so that there's a swing yeah. we just did an episode on no joke all about courage oh. and we said that we were talking about how it's directly proportionate to dread the dread that leads up to it yes. oh. it's like the more dread that kind of leads up to it the moment where it happens you're that courageous interesting yeah. and when i saw you guys i think you like texted me or something on from like moments before or something yeah. like we're about to do this <laughs> this is and the i swing. Yes. was dreading your guys experience i was yeah. like re think it like just yeah, reconsider re- it you, you don't need to be doing this <laughs> yeah i definitely like i didn't dread the swing as much because i was like i had just like resigned that it yes. was gonna happen i yes. was like i wasn't like excited i was upset by it <laughs> yeah i was like what the fuck was that a choice <laughs> though because new zealand the company that was sponsoring you didn't make you do that right like didn't it was like a half say- choice They're like we want you to do adventurous things we they can get you on the do swing a fucking bungee jump yeah really? no and we were and like that that was just like Absolutely not. You, yes, of course. <laughs> no, 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 duh, Jake. Uh, no. <laughs> but it's it's really the same amount of like fear risk. and like risk. The, yeah. difference, the difference being that the swing, you 
got into the harness yes. as you're above the platform. Yes. Right? Like the platform the, that was the, what, 5,000 feet high? Yeah, yeah. The, well, the platform's really high, but you're looking down and all you see is the floor. Jesus. Right. And then you like go out, oh, then like the floor disappears, yes. and then you see it and you're, you're like, hanging. oh, fuck, but you're already in the thing. You're, you're in it. And you're in the you, diaper. And you yeah. don't right. have control over when it gets let go. There's like a, a fucking medieval torturer guy. <laughs> yeah. Behind yeah. You. yeah. The kind of like, fucking with you. Yeah. yeah. He's like, you got, oh, as soon as we're, I think we talked about this on the podcast before, but I want to tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please yeah. do, will you? Uh, it's, we got out there, we're sitting like over 500 feet below us, whatever, and the dude says to Amir, so you like pranking people, huh? <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. That's him! That's, that's him. not me! That's him! Bring me back! Yeah. Bring me back! <laughs> Don't fuck with me! No, please! <laughs> well, the, you talk about courage. We basically chose the less courageous, least yeah. courageous way to do the swing, okay. because there's there are like eight options because people in New Zealand are fucking insane right. that they don't get off to the world's largest swings anymore. That doesn't register on their heartbeat whatsoever. Right. So you can go upside down. You can go blindfolded. What? Me and Jake could be like flip flop 69ing each other as we drop into the yeah. gorge. So people went upside down. That was upside like, down. Stop. Dangling upside down. What do you have to gain? Well, like, uh, yeah. what the do swing's you have not scary to gain? enough. Defying death just traditionally yeah. right side up isn't enough. No. Yeah. They want like, to do the upside down uh, blindfold. Folded swing. I always felt that way about bungee jumps. I don't need to prove to anybody how bouncy I am. Yeah. I, I, I get nothing from it. You get nothing from it. No. Well, that being said, the joy of finishing it and doing it and yes. like having it done, that felt so good that right. I'm like, what if I did the bungee? Like higher See, risk, higher reward. Yes. And that's why I didn't – I it was the worst of every world, the swing, <laughs> because you came back from the swing and you were like, oh, that wasn't bad. I'm a pussy because I didn't do the bungee. <laughs> uh, it was like lose lose. And then we like on the way, on the way back there was like a we were on a bus with a bunch of people and these two beautiful blonde girls uh, talked to me. They're like, oh, I think I saw you up there. I had like I took a picture and then they showed me and it was a guy bungee jumping. <laughs> They're like, and I was like that. Uh, oh, that just like, could have oh, been me. No, I don't think that was me. Was They're like, well, didn't you there. you did the bungee just before us? And I was like, I did the swing. <laughs> Swing you know, doesn't no, sound swing. so cool ba- anymore. No, baby's for swingy. <laughs> we did, Actually, we did the baby, thing that baby toddlers do yeah. at the park. <laughs> When babies are, are not, a, finally not there's scared. A, there's a bouncy castle in the <laughs> yeah. in the driveway, yeah. and that's sort of what I did. A guy in a scary costume pushed me out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you went upside down or blindfolded or uh... no, just normal swingy. <laughs> okay, just, that's, just that's normal swingy. Yeah. Like, oh, I get it. Yeah, well, the bungee jump was more expensive. Yeah. No, 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 it wasn't that. <laughs> Everything all was expensive. For... More of a fear based decision myself. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just not. What is it? Courageous, yeah. as you say. <laughs> is the bungee from the same spot where you would have swang? Can you just drop down they're from there? They're across the. Uh, they're like across the Jesus ravine from Christ. each other. Different cables. So like you look, you see the bungeeers fucking, and they're fucking yeah. badass. Yes. Their their thing is like suspend. Even the bungee uh, platform is yeah. suspended by cables Ugh. in the middle of the ravine. God damn it! And the uh, <laughs> and the swing, you sort of walk across a bridge to uh. it. You are the pussy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This way. I mean, yeah. we haven't done any of this, None of and it. we're terrified. None of yeah. it. So if you, you guys win. If you want to like just feel the rush, like 0.05 of one percent of the rush that you would feel. Yes. Do a Google search for Nevis Bungee. I okay. Don't know if you guys or if you, anybody listening at home, because they they record everything cool. and it's it's from the top down. And it's just so terrifying to even like consider that you would possibly yes. be like, yeah. sit, like standing on the precipice. And then the hardest part is probably launching yourself. Up. I bet a lot of people get there and they're like, "It's just I don't want to jump." Of yeah. course, yeah. is bungee I'm scarier than skydiving? Is yes, it because I've skydived. Yeah, we both skydived. Really? Yeah. So what do you think that is? Because skydiving is obviously tens, like what five thousand feet up. I at really least 10, think feet up? it has so much to do with like, uh, you're like when you're bungee jumping, you have. to. Everybody is standing away from you. You have to jump. You have to it's choose. You, you the, are choosing to do it. Yeah. And, yeah. In the, in the skydiving, <clears throat> we got strapped to a professional right. who would like okay. who goes like fifty times a day. Okay. And then it doesn't matter if you're like, oh, I don't want to do it. It's, it's still like, happening. He's yeah. Ar- you're he on wants his, to do you're, it now. Yeah. Yeah. The decision is you're made. You're strapped to his stomach, and he's like holding you out the got plane. It. You don't even jump in the skydiving. Got it. He That's jumps. a huge difference. Or she jumps. Here's yeah. here's the five seconds of somebody about to jump. Okay. And she's scared. She's wiggling. She can't oh, look down. Oh, that little boogie almighty, board is size. A little, <laughs> a little so board. horrifying. Just going How down. How old is she? <clears throat> Jesus, God. No. And you have to, like, Superman it down. 
And now you're dropping uh, for a good four or five seconds. And you have to trust this. This will say, You're basically killing – as far as your brain sees, you're killing yourself. Killing yourself. Yeah. Because you don't know that the your brain that's thing behind you will yank you back I'm surprised up. more people don't have heart attacks on the way down. Oh, I bet that's a possibility. What Do you oh, remember any of the thoughts weird. you were having in flight, like in free fall? Do you have thoughts? I think it's just screaming. <laughs> screaming. Yeah, screaming and I mean, wind. It was, Holy shit. It was so cold. <laughs> yeah. And, like, the wind is rushing. And yeah. We, we're yelling. I yeah. mean, I was having fun once we were free falling. Yeah. And then as it was – as we're, like, swinging, I'm like, it's over. We did it. That's great. And then I'm also full of fear as we're going back up Cold because back I up. think that the guy is going to fuck with us and oh, release us because of the again. prank thing. Exactly yeah. the prank thing. Oh, my God. A second drop? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a lawsuit. Yeah, exactly. Nope. 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 That's, that's, a that's a lawsuit. Yeah. That's Sorry. a lawsuit. <laughs> Neither. <laughs> Actually, I think we can sue just for the fear, the prank The fear. Comment. Yeah. yeah. I think we, we could definitely you know, invoice them for promoting them for so long. Just, you know, <laughs> just invoice them. Do you guys have anything crazy planned for this trip to Australia? Anything adventure or and nuts? Uh, um, we have the, – the two shows are going to be the highlights, and then cool. we have to figure out what to do before and after. Great. Yeah. The last time we were in Australia, we went to five different cities. Cool. Which right. was really great. Wow. But this time we're doing just two cities. Great. Which is, I think, going to be a little bit easier on us because, yeah. like, last time we were, like, Partying, staying yeah. up late, it wake up, sampler. travel, fly, yeah. sampler, like yeah. a little right. bit of this, the beer a little flight. bit of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beer so now yeah. I think it's going to be really fun to like spend a couple of days in Melbourne, Settle spend a couple in. days great. in Sydney. Yeah, That'll great, be great, deep immersion, full immersion. Uh, all right, let's answer a few more questions. Great. I just feel like I know we are, we have to get back to the show, but <laughs> there's. Um, I can't believe we haven't – Billy mentioned it briefly. It's your birthday today. Amir, it's your yeah, freaking it's your birthday. That's true. It is my birthday. While we're recording, not when you're listening. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just, it is, just know that currently, while I'm talking, it's my birthday. The yes. day of your birth. Yeah. Hence the Whitefish Donut. Have yeah. you guys done a birthday episode of your podcast? Big we time. have. That's on, a good – On that's Adam's birthday. Yeah, oh, big time. that's a nice one. Yes. How do you feel about uh, your birthday today? 34? Yeah. I feel all right. It yeah. feels – Pretty much indistinguishable from thirty three. Good, because it's just vaguely before thirty nine. Exactly. I don't know. Do you like, think you'll have an exciting birthday again before forty? Oh, I don't think so. What do you do? What do you do to celebrate like the big three seven? Thirty five is a nice prime number. Thirty five is like a pretty. Thirty five is pretty good. Yeah, I don't know, Bill. You're thirty five. What do you? What do you? Is thirty five build a log cabin? Yeah, yeah. thirty five. You cool. go outside on your birthday. <laughs> you build Bare yourself a cabin. Hands. You're finally a man. Yeah, you don't use nails. You yeah. just punch the wood into the other wood. <laughs> yeah. It's much like the button to the vagina sex tag. Cause you're just crushing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Your birthday was recently, right? Uh, it was December. It is now January, so yeah. Pretty, yeah, pretty a recently. sweet VR machine was rented. That was rad. We oh, got oh, Oculus. Cool. That was cool. We Do you Oculus. still have it? Uh, rented Oculus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, doesn't Patton Oswalt have that great bit about how birthday – it's like no birthdays are worth celebrating after 21, and you should only celebrate the decades, 30, 40, 50, 60, uh, 70, that's 80, pretty 90. good. It's yeah, like, right, after we you, right after you pass your driver's test yeah. Yeah. in 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, <laughs> yeah, then yeah. you can celebrate. Exactly, <laughs> after you pass your prerequisite driver's test. Yeah, especially the small shades of difference between – do you ever forget? You, I, I think earlier today you forgot. I think maybe 40 asked, minutes yeah, ago. I asked you how old you are, and you were like 30. And you were like, are you 34? And I was like, no, <laughs> but I won't swear to that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I be won't certain. Sw- yeah. <laughs> That's really true. I am. I think I'm 31, but I'm not 32. <laughs> right? <laughs> I think or I'm 31. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not 32. Yeah. Wait until we're like 54. Exactly. We're going to be like 47. I might be yeah, 61. but you always know how old your kids are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wait, just... we're almost five different – we're all four different ages. Yeah. That's pretty exciting. Yeah. <laughs> we run the whole gamut of 31 to 35 white men. We, <laughs> we, we are Marty the full diverse – yeah. Marty's 32 to complete the straight. Perfect. Uh, all right. Let's answer – here's a, a presidential-related question because we're, we're going to have a new president by the time this comes out. God damn it. Whether Ugh. you like it or not. Don't like it. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, let's get a female name from Jake. Uh, t- Tilma. All right, let's do Adam. Okay. <laughs> uh, did someone say Tatilma? <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah, 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 no, Jake did. Oh, so. Tatilia Williams Smith? Yeah, Tatilia Williams Smith. Tatilia Williams Smith. Is related or unrelated to Tad or Patricia? Uh, she is Tad's sister. <laughs> yes. No relation <laughs> to Patricia. To Patricia. Yes. But she Ooh. met Patricia at summer camp. Also uh, unrelated. Yeah, no. What a oh. weird day that was. Weird. <laughs> Two <Yeah>. Williams Smiths? <laughs> For what? <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, 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 here's my issue. I'm a proud Latina that was a Clinton supporter. However, my best friend wasn't. We didn't talk about politics throughout the past year since I knew this. 
It upsets me quite a bit that she still supported who she did after all the incredibly racist, sexist, and just blatantly rude comments he made about so many people. I think she's talking about Trump. I think so, too. Daniel, Danny Trump? <laughs> Danny. <laughs> but even then, we didn't bring it up. I voted for Clinton in a state that goes blue. She cast her to vote in a swing state that went red. Yikes. Uh, my problem is that we are going to vacation in NYC in February. Oh. This will be the first time I'll be seeing her since August, and obviously the first time I see her with our new president in power Ugh. I love her very much but I feel like I haven't co- been completely honest with her in our friendship since I haven't been able to talk to her about this after all she is my person and we tell each other everything yeah as proud Latina woman I just want to know why yeah but the last thing I want to do is ruin the trip I need your help please let me know what you both think I should do dang on a lighter note, if you have any recommendations about what to eat or drink at NYC, that would be greatly appreciated. Pizza! Yeah, pizza! Soda! Pizza! Pizza! Soda! Soda! Pizza! Soda! Pizza! 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 <laughs> Forget that first complicated question. Eat pizza! <laughs> Love all your favorite Zaza joints. <laughs> and Billy, what's your favorite soft drink? Check out Penn Station. Great pizza in Penn Station. Sbarro! There's a Sbarro on 49th and anything. Yeah. <laughs> 49th Street is a Sbarro. A long yeah. Sbarro with little <laughs> roads in the middle of it. <laughs> That'd be little amazing roads. if like, we bought the entire street. The Certainly Sparrow a company district. could do that. Yeah. 49th. 49th is Sbarro. Sparrow and Six. Yes. We're on Sparrow and Six. Uh, do you have anybody close to you that voted for Trump that you're like, I don't want to even talk about this? I I I mean like this is on obviously on everyone's mind right now. This is like such a complicated emotional thing. I I necess- I have some hometown friends that are Trump voters, but like no one's super in my super duper inner circle. Right. But to uh Talela? Was it Talela? I would Talela Talela. Uh I don't know. My inclination right now in this moment because I have wildly swirling emotions surrounding this ordeal uh but i think that <laughs> radical honesty is uh I, I know that it's your person and it's your best friend and you might have differing opinions and i think that because it's your best friend and because you respect your friend so much you should be radically honest and i don't think you should be afraid to say i'm a little concerned that you voted this way and these are my thoughts and why do you think the way you think in fact i think avoiding the topic at this point with our nation at stake is um i don't i don't see what you stand to gain from not talking about it i think yeah. if you're truly intimates and friends be honest. Put your own thoughts and feelings on the table. That is what I would say. I, the, to me, the real problem is like I could be honest with somebody. But yeah. to me, for me being really honest, I would be like you voted for Trump and I honestly find that inexcusable. Yeah. And I think I hate you now. Yeah. There's no – I the I feel like if you want to get like uh, a more – a loving answer you yeah. gotta listen to a different yeah. voice than mine like yeah. i the right. fuck anybody that did that there's I, nobody yeah. in your family that voted for trump no and if i mean i feel like there's got to be at least a cousin or an sure, aunt or i mean there's, i guess there's like a distant second cousin or something that did but i would tell that person to go fuck themselves mm-hmm. and i think at a family that voted reunion for trump should go fuck themselves <laughs> i have a uh... Maybe a slightly different perspective. I have family and a lot of friends from Long Island who like voted for Trump, and there's like I knew that I could take the one option, which was to just be like super pissed and tell them why they're wrong. But then I would hear myself say those words mm-hmm. after the fact and be like, I would never listen to anybody who just told me I'm wrong blindly and mm-hmm. like walked away from it. Right. Mm-hmm. So my my position with everybody who I loved before the election and I will still probably love after the election, despite who they voted for, mm-hmm. because they're more complicated than just this one vote Mm -hmm. is what can I, how can I speak to them? Cause they already respect me. We have a friendship or we're a family member. So they already respect me at what I believe that's already been established. Mm -hmm. How can I talk to them from just like my perspective on the matter and not project onto them why they're wrong, but rather like, <clears throat> maybe you don't know about conversion therapy. Like, let's just uh, like let, maybe you don't know about that. Like, that's something that like really like gets me uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Like when the like future vice, vice president, and I'll say that to a few few people, mm-hmm. and they'll be like, "What conversion therapy? Like Mike Pence? What?" Right. And so I can't assume that every 
Trump voter or person who disagrees with me is a bad person or should be cut out of my life. That's right. But what I, I take on the personal responsibility now of trying to slow things down and create more dialogue and less debate. Because debate is how we became these two – everyone just argued online to the point where yep. it's like, I know who you're voting for. Right. You know who I'm voting for. And we're both going to yell in a vacuum until the election's right. over. Right. And so I'm just trying to build little bridges that hopefully when in two years local elections start happening and in four years bigger elections start happening, those bridges have already been built just enough so that like – if I do put out like a slightly more political stance somewhere, people will already know where I'm coming. Yeah, from. I get Jake. <clears throat> I get your like. If you did that, like it's a disqual. It's like a de de credibility <laughs> fire. I totally get that. <laughs> I feel that way too, to a certain degree. One thing my girlfriend Maggie has done in an effort to sort of like be a little more diplomatic and kind of the icebreaker that she will use to sort of gently ease into the conversation is like, what news? How do you get your news? Like, where do you get your information? Like, what news sources do you read? Like, what newspapers or what? where do you get your information? Right. Because it is a – I mean, I feel like that is, like, so much at the core of what is so fucked about all this is that, like, That's we smart. can't even really agree on fact. Right. Like, empirical scientific fact. Well, it's like so, limited like, knowledge where right. the thing that I'm putting in and right. getting out, they're not even getting the inputs exactly. from that. They're exactly. getting inputs from somewhere else. That's right. So to me, that was, would be uh, what I would be most curious about and I think would be a non too feather ruffly way to sort of like ease into a conversation about values mm -hmm. and about uh, information and knowledge that is <laughs> – that you can sort of back off of the yeah. uh, contempt that you have for people who you disagree with, which I completely understand. Yeah. Like, I, <laughs> everybody should definitely listen to you two. <laughs> no. I, can, I cannot get uh, over my I resentment know. for I somebody. I just find it unforgivable Here, maybe I'll, I'll work towards it but well, that's I, what it I makes me it is, so upset Jake. i think that it's like you have to address and i talked to my sister at length about this where it's like until we are not like we the four of us and the people who are like and this girl who's dealing with this problem until we have like taken off the raw edge of it all like we're all still very emotionally raw right now and we're all very like coming out of a traumatic experience and you have to ask yourself, am I in a position to be part of this conversation with my best friend? Am I going to be in a healthy enough mind space that I'm not going to actually screw up what I already believe because I'm so emotional? And so it's like if you can find – Lin-Manuel Miranda says that you need to like eat your vegetables but also like have your dessert too. And so there's like – you kind of need to like find what you were, made you happy before the election and like, like live in that a little bit just that you can normalize yourself so that when you are ready to have bigger conversations that might go one of two ways, you can at least be sure that you are – level-headed in this that's why i feel like what if she's asking me what to do this specific bringing it back to this question i wouldn't necessarily have the conversation before the trip i, I would let the trip exist in this ignorant blissful bubble have fun with your friend and then later on find out all this stuff why they think that way hmm. and if you're more curious than angry like uh understanding the root of her thoughts or guess, yeah, maybe it's as simple as like oh i just don't like hillary because this that and the other yeah she doesn't necessarily think that uh, she's like purporting or supporting this yeah. specifically racist, sexist human. Right. But that's my. You're saying avoid my... it all together on the vacation and then later be like, oh, by the way, I might hate you. Any that's thoughts? right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the com it comes down to the question being should they do it at the beginning of the trip to get out of the way or do it at the end After of the trip? The trip. Yeah. I think, I think beginning of the trip trumps end of the trip. Trump's <laughs> Jake. Well, he said, "I it. swear Don't to take God, that Jake. Word from yeah. that second, that distant second cousins." I'm telling you, he's getting his claws in you, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, shit, dude! The conversion therapy yeah. word. I, I, yeah, I could totally see it either way. I'm, I, I see the value in both strategies. But either, what would you do if you, if it were you? If I were, if it were me. Ooh, I like to think I would have the courage and the strength to be like, I'm pretty upset with you, and I want to have a great time, but I want you to know I'm upset because I'm an honest adult. But I probably would never address it. But then it's in like practice, the, it's I would like never the address swing it. Thing. Every yeah. single good, every single good thing you do on this trip, you had to let you were like, oh shit, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I still have to have a really hard Dread. conversation. Yeah, with him exactly. At the, end of the trip. So you get it, it out of the way it. first, and then I mean, New York's such too. a great distraction. You guys will forget they had the argument. All the pizza, hopefully. Or I, I mean, say, they... I was going to say pizza. Like Lombardi's is a good pizza. Pizza is a good pizza. Yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> <laughs> Bleaker Street Pizza. You and guys can just soda, soda. <laughs> if if at any point an awkward moment arises where maybe you started to dip your toe into politics, you can just look at each other and just say pizza, pizza, yeah, pizza, 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 pizza. Lady and the tramp each other so close. <laughs> yeah. They just, exactly. just 
The, that's the unity right there. Yeah. Uh, Billy? I would have the conversation in advance, but I would know what I was going to say on the phone. I wouldn't pick like dial her without knowing exactly uh, yeah, what script. I wanted to say. I would just have like a plan in mind so that I didn't go off the rails and then I was speaking from an emotional place. Yeah. I would want to speak from like, here's how I feel. You were my best friend before this. You'll still be my best friend after this. But that being said, here's how I feel. Mm-hmm. I don't pass judgment on you because I already have it. Do you have any really close friends that voted for DJT? Yeah, my best friend. Oh, there My you best go. Friend. The same guy who was ripping phone books and uh, whatever we were talking <laughs> about earlier. Cars. Moving fiat. I but, thought you know, that guy was cool until now. <laughs> he doesn't. I, you know, I spoke to him immediately after, and I was like, "Dude, this is why I voted for." And and I was like, you know, and he has he like basically grew up in the inner city with like nothing but minorities, like the inner city part portion of my town. Like he was literally raised by no parents, like Latino neighbors mm-hmm. and all these different people, mm-hmm. and he works in a union. And he doesn't read the news, and mm-hmm. he just gets this like big mass produced. This is what we do in this town, and he just doesn't care enough. And that's not I like it, it bit us in the ass, but he doesn't care enough to really question authority because like he has his life in place. And so, as his best friend, I'm the one outlet. I'm literally the one right. person right. who can potentially put a like a crack in this stone and just be like, "Hey, listen, you trust me. I know that." So. This is why I voted for this person. Just consider these things. And, like, let me be a person of political advice maybe next time around. If you have questions, like, maybe it could be me. And it, I made inroads on a lot of Long Island hardheads after oh. the election. A lot. A lot. And so it was like that actually brought me a lot of, like, calm after the storm, which mm-hmm. was like, okay, this is my personal responsibility. Yeah. It's localized and it's small, but I'm a well enough speaker and well-respected enough in this community that – I've always kind of gone against the grain of what these people do. They'll continue to listen to me in some capacity. You should run for office out there, man. Truly. I'm 35. Diplom- I am 35. You're th- you could be president. <gasps> being diplomatic without being condescending is a hard line to walk. I don't know how to do it yeah. because okay. I have the same impulse as you, Jake, to shame, which is only to shame. <laughs> yeah. Exclusively. I, every time I, we, like, I <laughs> want to say to every Trump voter, how dare you? Right, right. So that's my impulse completely. But sure. uh, I also acknowledge the truth that Billy is espousing, which is uh, it's sort of that can tight that can – Totally. Reinforce I, the divide. I want I want Billy on the front lines. Yo, I, do not, I do not want to be out there yeah, in yeah, the yeah. in the trenches converting people. Me I want to be huddled up with my people saying, fuck those guys. Same. We I'll need you on our team. Make, yeah. We need we need ride or dies on our team. Make no mistake, Jake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need an army. Yes. Uh responsibility. Pardon? What do you think about that nickname? Responsibility? <laughs> Kind of came out of left field. I wasn't really prepared for a nickname test. Uh, <laughs> or responsibility. Off the cuff, I hate what do you think? it. What do you think? Uh, <laughs> I guess neutral. I guess my answer would be neutral. Neutral is a great starting point. Yeah. Oh, that's just responsibility. People wouldn't like responsibility. that. Responsibility. That's kind of cool. And then we could shorten it eventually to Billy. To Billy. <laughs> <laughs> it's short for responsibility. Or Billy T. Yeah. Billy T. Williams. Billy T. Williams. Uh, all right, cool. That was a fun, real way to end this show. Yeah. Uh, why don't you tell us about your, your podcast really quick in case people – Want more Billy and Adam? How do they get it? You go to the HeadGum Network. Uh, you subscribe on iTunes. The show is called the No Joke Podcast. It's uh, one topic. We have three acts. They are our past, our current, and our future lives with that topic. Yep. And it is as silly as this episode with you guys is. It usually goes right off the rails. Yep. Sometimes we have a guest. Sometimes we don't. We've it's been on the show. I've been on the Both show. Both of you individually absolutely mm-hmm. have. Indeed. Ben it's Schwartz did a show. Yep. Ben you Schwartz did a show. Ben. Yep, yep. We had uh, one of the Try Guys from BuzzFeed on recently, Mamrie right. Hart and Grace Helbig. Yep. We have uh, fun guests. We, uh, I listened to the fitness episode, which was really great, too. Oh, okay. Just to hear you two talk about the completely opposite viewpoints of working out oh, that yes. you guys have. Yes. Adam, who's never been in a gym. Not and once. Billy, I don't think you've ever left a gym. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm actually curling <laughs> during this podcast. <laughs> He's doing, Billy taught me about supersets. Do you know about that? Yeah, yeah, my brother taught me about him. Basically doing, instead of rest, you do another set. Yeah, so there yes. is no rest. <laughs> right. There is no so rest. in between sets, which is when you're supposed to be resting. Don't do that. It's, yeah. it's just You're more. doing a harder yeah. workout. Yeah. 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 It's like when you're done with a meal, just continue eating until your next meal. Constantly be nibbling on a saltine. It's going to be lunch. <laughs> Are you eating enough protein right now? Good I question. Think, I don't think I, I mean, I had that shake today. That's 50 right there. 50 grams of protein. I have Amir and Ben. I'm training them five days a week at the gym. Good. And they have committed to the system i'm i'm good i'm two weeks straight yeah no, they are no off days five days a week in the gym and they're uh, consuming 100 grams of protein per my request every day <laughs> very good <laughs> per my request. very good billy told me that he eats a box of pasta a day yeah which I, I thought that. was that pretty funny i know that's true <laughs> that is i know that's true. so true. usually with a couple of chicken breasts <laughs> that's true yeah yeah that's true. <laughs> that's, this is all true a college freshman diet <laughs> just yeah. forever forever i mean michael phelps did it so Do i'm it. gonna try yeah. exactly. <laughs> Ten thousand calorie days why not you're yeah. burning it yeah. you're definitely burning it that's yeah. right 
Uh, great. So no joke podcast on the HeadGum Network. Yeah. Uh, if you have your, any, any of your own questions or theme song submissions, the email address for everything, every single thing, is if I were you show at gmail.com. Opening theme song was written by Jeremy. This closing one is written by David. I want to see if he had anything that he wanted me to say about him. If you guys wanted to talk about more pizza places to get in New York while I look that up. Mm. Oh, you know what? I really like a hungover pizza pie from Vinny's uh, on Bedford in Brooklyn. Oh, oh. Get their, but get like their weird really shit, good. like the tater tot bacon cheese pizza. Whoa, tater tot, baby. Yeah, yeah, they have it's barbecue like, chicken cutlet pizza. Yes, so fried chicken so on a pizza. Good. But I'm yeah. still not mad at the dollar pizza. The place that like straight up promotes oh, our like pizza, pizza bros? slices are one dollar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, two pizza bros or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Yeah. Their pizza is like pretty rock solid. Yes, the entire yeah. Alpha and Omega of the New York City pizza culture is that 14th and 1st there's artichoke pizza on one side which is like fancy bullshits like oh, barbecue yeah. chicken delicious $7 a slice right, yeah, right yeah. across the street pizza bros 99 cents <laughs> you, know where you, well. you know where you find Billy yeah. and Adam we yeah. are the pizza bros and everything what was the uh, there's these Coney Island the hot dog places Nathan's. are those still yes no, is no that not Nathan's you're thinking of the place that was on 72nd Grace Papaya yes what oh, are those Grace Papaya Gr- Grace like... Papaya is just like a local New York establishment <laughs> yeah and they've uh, I think like there's only like two or three left there's now a, they have fries oh, there's yes. one there's one on 14th and 2nd. <laughs> yes. Yes, that was the second one. Yeah, but they would the have one. like the $2 special or the 2 yes. special where you get two hot dogs <laughs> and a, and a soda yes. or one of their juices yes. for two fifty. And like any Why are they going out of business? Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Did their rent go up uh, on 14th and 2nd? <laughs> <laughs> Serving $1 hot dogs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they pay the landlord in hot dogs. Yeah. Uh, all right. So this closing theme song is written by David Knackman, who's on SoundCloud. David Knackman with a K. Great. And two N's at the end. So All right. There you have it. Cool. Uh, David Knackman. Thanks to David and Jeremy. David and Knackman's to... got a knack, man. Nice. <laughs> nice. Finish nice. strong, nice. Jake. Nice. Finish strong. Hey, Jake and Mir, thank you for having us on your podcast. Dudes, thank you for coming on the show. Nice, Always thank you so very, fun. very much for having us. We'll be back next week. Later. David Knackman on the track. On the track. On the track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jake and Amir okay. got a podcast. Email in your questions and they finna yeah. put you on blast. Yeah. It's just these coy two Ooh. Jews or they might have a guest oh. on. Plus they got a bunch of people doing podcasts hey. for HeadGum worldwide. Whoa. Yeah, they're coming to Australia, bitch. Cause that's yeah. where Jake yeah. is sure to get his genitalia lick. What? Huh? Miss Hurwitz, please turn down the podcast. If I were you, show. Yeah. If I were you, show. What? If I were you, show. Hey. The coyest Jews that you know. Yes, dude. They'll help you out your predicament. Don't New not. shows every Monday, bitch. We know that you're listening. Yeah. 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 That was a headgum podcast. <laughs>